final lesson of the CSHS Elementary Python course. Um, today we're going to be learning about functions. And as always, if you're following along in the Python notebook, you're going to want to run this cell before you learn anything else. So what is a function? A function is some code that can be ran at other points. So you can essentially condense or make it all in one line, some code. So a function can look like this. We're going to define, with def, my function, param1, param2. And we're going to do something inside the function. And finally, we're going to return something. So we can break this down line by line. So def my function param1 param2. Def is going to be you're just defining a function, short for define. And then my function is your function name. You can name it whatever you want. And then param and param2 are things called parameters. Inside of a function, you can pass in variables that will be used inside of the function. So in this case, we named them param1 and param2. Um, and then this line print my function is running is just any code that you really want to have inside your function. It'll just run whenever your function gets called. In this case, we just made it a little print statement. And finally, this last line, this return param1 plus param2. So functions can often have return statements. And a return statement is what the function will evaluate to at the end, or what the function will be. It is the <laughs> almost essence of the function. Um, not all functions will have a return function, and those are called void functions. But in our case, our function will evaluate to just adding our two parameters or variables that we gave it. Um, so a more basic function would look like this. So def speak print hello. We're defining a function with no parameters. We're not going to give it anything. And when it's called, we're just going to say hello. So we can, we can call a function like so. We press this run button. And actually, I need to run this first to define the function. Then we can run this. And now we can see we got hello. So now we can add a parameter into our function. So we can say def speak words. We now are giving our function to say, and we're just going to print back out whatever we gave it. So we can run this cell to define our function. And now when we call our function, we must provide something to place paper words. So we can do this by passing in something like so. Um, let's say, hello, I like cake. Cool, I like cake too. Um, finally, we'll add a return statement into our function. So this is a new function called add. Where we're just going to be adding our first parameter and our second parameter. And we're going to save that in the third parameter. And then finally, we're going to return this third parameter. So we're going to define this function. And now we can see, all right, we're going to add one and four. And we're going to save it to our result. So like I said, this is what the return function does. It allows you to store your function as a variable, which is pretty cool, because now we can use this anywhere else we want. Um, also something that you might find interesting is you don't actually need to save your third variable. You can just simply say return first plus second. We define it now. And the code will behave exactly the same. And to show off parameters a little bit more, if instead of 1 and 4, we say 4 and 4, you can take yes, we're going to get these which is pretty good. So now we're going to go on to your turn. And your goal is to create a function that takes the name input, which is what you're giving into the function, and makes this make response to the user with a personalized message. For example, so if someone puts the name in as Charlie, you will output an image of the snake with the words, hello, Charlie, how are you? Or any other phrase using the name. You may use the already created function snake save to create the image of the snake. And you've seen this function before because you've seen the snake before. Um, we can double click this for the solution, but I'm going to pause for a little bit and give you, give you some, some time to try it. All right, assuming you've given it a, given it a shot and paused the video, uh, let's go through the solution together. So we can see def my function name. So we're defining my function, and we're going to give it, we're expecting a parameter called name. And then we're going to use return hello plus name. And this, this backslash n actually creates a line break where the code is. So it's, it's like entering in. So if I, if I was like, hello, Charlie, that n is me go, moving down a line. So we return that, and that is our string that we're returning. So now we're saving, we're saying name is Charlie, and then my function name, we're putting our name into our function. So now this is equal to this string up here. And finally, we're passing it into the default snake, snake say function, which will finally output a message of the snake saying, hello, Charlie. Or you got a hello, Charlie. How are you today? <laughs> um, but yeah, so so that is that for now. Um, now we're going to move on to the extension activity, which um, we're going to bring together everything that you learned in this course so far. So we're we're done learning about just functions, and we're going to learn we're going to bring together everything you learned. So if you want to go off on your own now and create your own program, um, you're more than welcome to do so. Just follow the guide on what should be in it. We're going to create a function, pass parameters in the function, use conditionals. Um, some mathematical functions, 
use loops, and finally use some print statements. We can see what's going on. Welcome back. If you are going to go off on your own, feel free to just enter your code here and reference below if you're going to get stuck or anything. Um, I would recommend following along just so you can get a guide and you can come back and create your own project or whatever you want to do. But if you wish to follow along with me, we're going to be creating an automatic class grader to determine what grade you get in class. So first off, we're going to create um, a list of different grades you got on assignments and try to add at least 10 of them. It's going to make for a more interesting project later on, but I'll pause for a little bit, give you a chance to create a list. All right, assuming you've created a list, we're going to look at the solution. So you can see that's just how you create a list. You use brackets and use commas to separate the values, save it as assignments, all fancy. It's good. So now the next step is you're going to create a function that takes that list in as a parameter. I'm going to pause again, give you some seconds. All right, assuming you you tried, we're going to look at the solution. So we're going to go def, and then we're naming our function grade averager. And we're going to pass in some grades, which are going to be our assignments up here. Um, that's the first line down. Now the next, next step is going to be within that function, get the total number of items within the list. I'll pause again, give you a chance to do it. All right, assuming you've done it, um, we're going to look at the solution. So we're going, to, we're going to create a new variable called length, and we're just going to set it to zero. And then we're going to go through each item in grades with a for loop. So for item in grades, we're going to increase the length. So at the end, you know, we're going to have a length that is equal to how many items we put in that grades list. Um, bonus, we can also use Python's built-in length function, which is just len grades, and that will return the length of any list. But I don't know if you've learned about that yet. Um, now in the same function, we're going to add together each item in the list to get the sum of each thing. So we're going to go through each item in the list, add them together, and then return that as a sum. So go ahead and try that. I'll wait a little bit. All right, we'll move on to the solution now. So you can see we're kind of doing the same thing we did before, except instead of creating a list for plus equal one, we're going to say total is equal to zero. And for each item in grades, we're going to increase total amount by that item which is pretty cool. So also you can use Python's built-in sum function, so to sum up all the items in a list. Um, these are pretty common tasks for, for items. And also bonus points if you combine the for loops. You don't actually need two for loops if you combine them. Um, now for the final task is divide the total sum of the grades by the length to get the average and also return that average. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you a chance to do that. So then you have, let's look at the solutions. So you can see our average is going to be equal to the total sum of all items in the grades divided by the total length of all the items. And in order to return that, we're just going to say return average, which is great. So now we have a function that can average any list of functions. So we can test it out on our assignments now. Um, and you can see 82.5. That was the, the average of this assignments list that we have up here. Um, so now that we have this like overall class grade, we must save it to a variable and determine which later letter grade we're going to get. So I'm going to give you a chance to attempt that. Come back to the solution. All right, we're going to go through the solution. Um, you can see we're just calling our function, which is this line up here for the assignments, and saving it into a variable. So now we will use a series of if statements to print out if the user which letter grade they got. So we're going to start with an assignment saying if they got greater than 89.5, they got an A. Um, I'll let you try that, come back to the solution. All right, assuming you're back, um, you can see if the average grade is greater than 89.5, we are going to print an A. That's just an if statement, fantastic. So now we're going to go on and we're going to use two LIF statements with the following outcomes. So if it's greater than or equal to 79.5, it's going to be a B. And if it's greater than or equal to 69.5, it's going to be a C. So wrap it up with an else statement telling them they got an F if they got any other grade. Um, I'll give you a chance to do that and come back. All right, back to the solution. So you can see if average grade is greater than 89.5, A. Else if it's greater than or equal to 79.5, it's a B. And finally, if it's greater than or equal to 69.5, it's a C. And then if it's anything else, anything below 69.5, that's going to be an F. Um, so congrats, you just created a program that when given a list of parameters, you can output a letter grade. So now your final thing to do, if you want, wrap your above if statement into a new function with a one variable called grade average, or average grade, sorry. That is this variable right there. Give you a few seconds for that. 
All right, now to the solution. So you can see we can just define a new function, get letter. We can go print out based on that. It's the same if statement, but defined within a function. Um, so now we have we can create a list of assignments and get a letter grade with three lines of code. We have condensed all of that code up above into three lines, which is amazing. That's the power of functions and everything that we've learned so far. And we can see we get a B. That's fantastic. That's what all of these assignments gave us. We got a B. And now, bonus, we can change our letter function to return the letter grade and then pass it into the snake say function for some extra fun. Um, I'll give you a little bit to try it in this cell down here. I'll come back to the solution. All right, assuming you're back to the solution, you can see that if letter grade, it's the same if statement, except instead of printing it, we're returning it. And then the three lines we have up here, we're just passing get letter into snake say. And now, to wrap it up, we got the snake telling us that we got a B. Pretty fantastic. Some good stuff going on. And congrats, that, that is the end of these lessons. You've made it far, you've learned a lot of things, you put it all together in a, in a large project to the end. If you made it this far and was able to understand everything, that's fantastic. Um, good job, everyone.